Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel, Psych for Everyone. My name is Dr. Naza and I am an Associate Professor of Internal Medicine, Psychiatry and Addiction Medicine. Today, we're going to talk about Major Depressive Disorder or MDD or simply depression. We're going to explore multiple things. We're going to explore why depression happens, how it's different from just feeling sad and or feeling bad or feeling depressed, how it affects our brains. And I'm gonna give you some practical tips how to fight it. So please stay with me until the end. I will share some real life strategies you can start using today. So what is MDD or major depressive disorder? Depression isn't just having a bad mood. It is a serious medical condition that affects the brain. In many ways, just like any neurological disorder or any medical disorder, we call it major depression disorder. And it happens when genetic factors and stress combine. That's the bottom line here. Depression happens because we have some genetic factors that predispose us to have depression plus stress could come in and cause depression to show up. So depression is what we call polygenic. That means multiple genes could be involved. It is in our genes. It comes from our parents or grandparents. Someone in the family probably has depression and we got it. Uh, plus stress will play a key role too. So even intermittent stress can trigger cortisol surges, which is a hormone that our body produced in response to stress. So this intermittent cortisol surges plus our genetic background is going to cause low in serotonin, which is your happiness neurotransmitter or your happiness chemical. Also, it's going to increase inflammation in the brain. And this is very evident in looking at the inflammatory markers, which are increased in patients with major depression disorder. Also, depression is going to decrease what we call brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which is a factor that our brain produces to produce new cells and new connections in the brain. So when, when we get the decrease in brain-derived neurotrophic factor, our brain ability to form new cells and new connection will be markedly decreased. Now these changes, the decrease in serotonin, the increase in inflammation, and the decrease in the neurotrophic factors will cause some problems, hypoactivity, or even decrease in size in lots of brain regions. So the first brain region that is involved in that is what we call the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, which is pretty much here. This one regulate your moods and regulate your concentration. So having problem with depression and problem with decrease in brain derived neurotrophic factor could lead to decrease in function in that particular area. The other area in the brain that is very commonly involved in depression is what we call the hippocampus, which is responsible for your memory and emotional regulation that would be probably uh, impaired in patient with depression. Also, it could affect the reward center in the brain or what we call the nucleus accumbens, which is somewhere in the temporal lobe. This one is responsible for the ability to enjoy activities. So hypofunction in this area could lead to what we call anhedonia or loss of pleasure. People will not be able to enjoy pleasurable activities anymore. The other area that could be involved in depression is the hypothalamus, which is responsible for your sleep, appetite, and sexual function regulation. So if we have problem in depression that affect this brain, patient may have problem with sleep, either sleeping more or sleeping less, depends on what kind of depression they have, typical versus atypical. We'll talk about that. We'll have appetite problems, either increase in appetite or what we call emotional eaters, or we have decrease in appetite in typical depression. And also sexual function or dysfunction will happen in patients with major depression disorder with problem in the hippocampus. So symptoms are different between patients. So you're not going to have two persons with the same symptoms. So really not everyone's depression looks the same. So some of them will have loss of appetite. Some of them will have overeating or what we call emotional eating. Some of them cannot sleep or they have what we call insomnia. Some of them sleep all day or what we call hypersomnia. 
Some of them feel mostly sad. Some others, they lose interest or they cannot concentrate. So it's a big illness again, and it has lots of factors that could cause it and could uh, 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 could lead into big dysfunction. So we have something called DSM-5 TR, which is our diagnostic manual. And to diagnose major depression disorder, you will need at least five symptoms for two weeks, including depressed mood or loss of interest. So again, depressed mood most of the day, loss of interest or pleasure, or what we call anhedonia, significant weight or appetite changes. Again, increase in appetite or decrease in appetite. Psychomotor agitation or slowing. So patients may be very irritable or may be very slow. They don't feel like talking much or do things anymore. Fatigue or low energy. Feeling worthless or having guilt feelings without uh, apparent reason, having poor concentration or indecisiveness. So yes, indecisiveness could be a symptom of what we call major depression disorder. And the last symptom here, which is absolutely necessary to know and screen for and prevent is thoughts of death or suicide. Now, there is a subset of depression I would like to mention. It is called the atypical depression. So here, people with atypical depression, they react positively to good news. So they are depressed at the baseline or actually irritable. And if something good happened, they feel happy about it. That's why lots of people say, well, you know, this person is not depressed. I just give him a gift and he feels good about it or they feel good about it. They sleep more and eat more, what we call uh, hypersomnia and hyperphagia. These patients tend to be emotional eaters. They feel heaviness in arms or legs. We call that the leaden paralysis. So this is when patients wake up in the morning or even during the day tells you, oh my goodness, my arms and legs are so heavy, I can barely move them. This is actually one of the symptoms of major depression disorder, atypical feature. The other one, which is as important as the other symptoms, they are highly sensitive to criticism or rejection. So if you even say something simple to them, they become very irritable. If you see these symptoms, you may tell me, oh my gosh, I've seen lots of people with these symptoms that nobody said they are depressed. They even tell you they have personality problems. That's who they are. Actually, they do have what we call major depressive disorder, atypical features. And, and if you see these symptoms or this kind of depression is actually fairly common in adolescents and young adults, and it goes and diagnosed and untreated. So uh, here's the good news. And, and this is when I talk about treatment and hope. Depression is a treatable illness. It's actually one of the most treatable psychiatric illnesses that we have in the medical field. So I'm gonna talk about things and I'm gonna talk about things that makes people better, that are not medications, that I would say start using now, not only to treat depression, but also to prevent depression. So the first category that I'm gonna talk about is lifestyle and self-help. The first one, exercise. The second one, sunlight or even light therapy. The third one, balanced diet. And the fourth one is mind and body practices. So uh, exercise, brisk walking, 30 minutes a day will increase what we call the brain-derived neurotrophic factor. So yes, walking at least 30 minutes a day, five days a week at least, seven will be better. More than 30 would do also the trick. Uh, exercise more than brisk walking will also do the trick, but non-brisk walking may not do it, by the way. So exercise increased brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which is the factor responsible for creating new neurons and connections in our brain. So yes, exercise will make your brain regenerate new cells and will make your brain form new connections and get better. The second one, sunlight or light therapy. Everybody said, well, you know, it's very nice outside. I feel much better. And this is not only the depression with seasonal variation, people who feel worse in winter and fall time and they feel better in summer and springtime, but also patients just, or people just regularly, if they see a nice day, they feel better. It's the sunlight. 
Now, if you live in an area with not much sun, we have some data that using a light box or losing using a light therapy box or red light therapy could actually help depression. Balanced diet, very necessary to treat depression. Folate rich food is very good for our mental health. Anything rich with folic acid, so fruits, vegetables, even red meat, by the way. People tell you don't eat red meat, but red meat have lots of folic acid and lots of folate. Any greens have lots of folate. These are very good for our mental health. And uh, really, we have lots of data now that some people uh, do not convert folic acid from one form to the other. And if they don't have this ability, which is genetic, by the way, uh, they will have less serotonin in their brain. So we give them medicine, medicine don't work. And they tell you, oh, come on, my medicines are not working. And I look at them, we usually check for that gene mutation. And I tell them, well, you know, because you don't have serotonin, I'm giving you medicine to preserve the serotonin inside the brain, but you don't have enough serotonin. That's why you're not gonna feel better. You're not gonna be happier. So uh, folic acid or food rich with folate is very important to fight depression and to prevent depression, by the way. So concentrate on your kids here. Make sure they have a very healthy diet very balanced diet, lots of greens, and also lots of protein because most of the protein sources have folic acid as well. And pretty much remember, greens, anything that is green, green leaves, green vegetables, broccoli, they have lots of folic acid or folate, which is very important for us. The other thing here is probiotics. We have lots of data now that probiotic could actually fight depression and anxiety. So eat lots of yogurts. And if you don't like yogurts, there is actually pills that have probiotics. Just make sure you shop for the best probiotic to make things a little better for you. Uh, mind and body practices, yoga, meditation, mindfulness. Try to do them even before you get depressed. If you're having a bad day, when you get home, open some videos about meditation or mindfulness and try to do it or go for some yoga or go to the gym for some exercise very important tips so under lifestyle exercise more than 30 minutes a day brisk walking remember that sunlight or light therapy balanced diet diet rich with folic acid and the mind body practices like yoga meditation and mindfulness are absolutely necessary for that now the second category that i want to talk about here and i would stress out very much because people may tell me i don't like to talk about my problem but i would tell them it is necessary to talk about your problem and actually not only talking about your problem the classical freudian way talking about mommy issues and daddy issues which can make people very uncomfortable some people may tell me i'm not ready yet there is a form of therapy that has the best evidence for major depression disorder which is which is called cognitive and behavioral therapy this is very important to understand and know and find a therapist well trained in cognitive and behavioral therapy because they could be very helpful in treating depression or actually starting with mild depression to prevent the development to moderate to severe depression now medication treatment we all know we have antidepressants and i can tell you there is a recent study that showed that 60 percent of patients who go to their primary care physician they are on some sort of antidepressant treatment the first line treatment ssri which stands for selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors they boost serotonin in their brain in your brain which is your happy neurotransmitter like fluoxetine sertraline citalopram or acetalopram we have lots of other medicine that now belongs to a second line third line or fourth line and also we can do lots of combination medication and we have lots of medicines out there that treat depression with very good safety profile now these medication they take at least four to six weeks to work and some people may feel a little worse briefly in the first couple of weeks of treatment. 
and certainly young adults and teenagers or children may have increased brief increase in suicidal thoughts and behavior the first couple weeks of treatment so that's why it should be monitored very closely by family members and professionals till the medicine kicks in and start to work if you ask me why is that why people get worse the first couple weeks of treatment it's like some people tell me what the heck why we feel worse now so to explain this very easily the old theory tells you oh depression the energy start getting better before depression gets better so people voice suicide more uh, uh one of the new theories now that when people are very depressed and they have low serotonin one of the serotonin receptors called 5-HT2C will be upregulated. So, and this receptor is linked with suicide. So when we give them a elective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, we flood the brain with serotonin. We stimulate all these hyperactive receptors and the patient feels worse and more suicidal. After two weeks, these receptors will start to calm down or get what we call down regulation. This is when people start feeling better. And actually after two weeks, receptors will start down regulate. Then they turn on another pathway to increase the brain derived neurotrophic factor that will lead to forming new cells and new connections in the brain. And if one SSRI doesn't work, doesn't mean the end of the world. We have other SSRIs. And if this class of medicine doesn't work, we have other classes that we can try. And sometimes we can try combination medications. And now we have lots of medicine, even from the antipsychotic class that are approved for major depression disorder as augmentation to antidepressants. We have some advanced therapies, like one of the therapies, which is called transcranial magnetic stimulation, which is not very new, but now this is, we think that's the future of psychiatry. Uh, it's pretty much a magnet that we put on this area in the brain, which is, we called it before the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. It will create a magnetic field. This magnetic field will be transformed or the brain will take the magnet and make an electricity inside the brain. This is how the brain communicate, by the way. We have electricity in our brain. And uh, this electricity will make sure the brain-derived neurotrophic factor become very abundant and we have more cells and more connections in the brain. And pretty much it's a very harmful, harmless procedure. So uh, side effect, the main one is having seizures because it could increase risk for seizure, but still very seldom here. Uh, the other one that is uh, very hot in the psychiatric literature now is ketamine or esketamine treatment. It's slow, rapid acting. It can cause uh, modulation a little faster than antidepressants. Uh, and it is approved by the FDA for treatment resistant depression. And of course, we have the old and gold treatment, the electroconvulsive therapy or ECT, still the gold, gold standard for severe treatment resistant depression. Now, one of the most serious symptoms of depression is suicidal thinking. If you or someone you know is having suicidal thoughts, professional help is essential. In the United States, you can call or text 988, the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline, anytime. There's always someone at the end of the line ready to talk to you and figure out something to make you feel better. Always remember, safety and support comes first. So really, depression is a real illness, just like diabetes or heart disease, but it's highly treatable. With the right combination of lifestyle changes, therapy, and medication, recovery is absolutely possible. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe for more mental health content. And remember, if you're struggling, reach out. Help is available. If you found this video helpful, 
Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss future content.